It has been quite a ride, boys. Soloing most of Ranked all the way to Diamond has been mentally taxing and exhausting, partly because I'm an introvert and mostly because I don't have any friends. However, there are a few things that I've learned along the way, which would have made my life a lot easier while grinding, and this is going to be hard to believe, but made it enjoyable as well. In this video, I will share with you 50 tips for Ranked in the Finals that will go over a winner's mindset, solo preparation, class selection, and in-game strategies. But before we get into that, if this video helps you out in any way, shape, or form, please smash that like button. It's a small button for you, but makes a tremendous impact on this channel. Also, subscribe for all things the finals. And yeah, let's cut the bullshit and get right into it. The first set of tips I want to talk about is mindset, attitude, and etiquette. Starting with not letting your pride and KD get in the way of winning. It does not matter if you get the assist, as long as the opponent is eliminated. It'll give your team the advantage and get you closer to keeping or stealing the cash out. The next is to always assume that you have to carry. Having this mentality will lead to less disappointment when paired up with teammates that are less skilled. You need to essentially expect the worst and hope for the best. The next is to treat your teammates with the same respect you would want to be treated with yourself. And with that being said, do not play the finger pointing game when something goes wrong. Beating a dead horse or calling your teammates a dumbass is not going to help them play at 100% capacity. Just say, good try, and move on. Remember, they can always turn off their mic, which can be even more of a detriment to your team play and potentially lose you 100 plus points. Now we're moving on to the next category, which is self-preparation. Things that you can do on your own to prepare for ranked. The first being, learn to be proficient with every class. Some classes may be unfun to play. However, flexibility will significantly increase your win rate. The next is to create different class profiles so that you can switch specializations on the first round to cater to your teammates selections. This may seem obvious, but get used to frequently using your abilities. You'll be surprised with how many mediums I see not utilizing their gas mines, gas grenades, or grenades when the time is right, losing us opportunities for holding a cash out or even stealing one. Speaking of mediums, the next tip is very important. You need to learn to use your defib on priority classes. For example, defib in a medium so that they can defib another teammate if they are down, or defibbing a heavy so they can dome or mesh shield so that you can safely revive another teammate. Trust me when I say this, creating tiny habits like these makes all the difference in the world. Moving on to yet another important medium gadget, which is the APS turret you need to learn how to properly use it, especially when going up against a heavy team that's abusing nukes and RPGs. Now, placing an APS turret down and standing right in the center of it is just not going to cut it because the heavy that is throwing the nuke at you can simply explode that nuke right outside of the APS turret's range and still do an incredible amount of damage even after the nerf. So rather than standing in the middle of it, place the APS turret in front of you so that the projectile needs to pass it in order to get to you thus nullifying its damage and effect. Now we are going to transition to heavies. Learning to use the dome shield is extremely useful. It can help you cap cash outs, revive teammates, provide you cover when the enemy is aping you, and even help you and your teammate close gaps. And if you are a light main and want to be a paranoid schizophrenic and ranked, I highly recommend learning how to use the glitch grade grenade combo. This combo can essentially wipe teams and completely remove their abilities. And the combo goes like this. Throw a glitch grenade, then grenade, then glitch, then grenade. Deactivating their abilities, doing damage, and deactivating abilities if you missed it the first time, and then doing more damage. Now the next two tips are things that you can casually do while playing Quick Cash or Bank It, and that is to actively try to memorize each map layout while in-game to the best of your ability. This will help you set up for better vantage points, defend cash outs, and most importantly, get to the cash out faster with the quickest route. The next is to try your best to memorize all the vault spawn points. This is very advantageous when you have no choice but to wait for the next vault to respawn, allowing you to position yourself appropriately to get there as quick as possible. Now let's move on to the next category, which is class pick and loadout. These are the tips that pertain on what you need to do when you're in the pregame lobby right before a tournament. The first is to click J to view your teammates loadouts to figure out which one of your profiles will best support them. When choosing a class specialization and loadout, always make sure that it is effective in several scenarios, rather than one that requires your team's assistance. This is because you do not know if your teammate even understands the class that they are using, if they play aggressively, 
or even if they stick with the team. The class you choose has to not only be a one-man army, but also effectively aid your teammates. This is exactly why light and solo queue is such a liability, because its effectiveness and survival is dependent on teamwork. Also, when choosing your class, remember the current meta is medium, 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 heavy, or medium, heavy, heavy. Do with that knowledge as you will. I know somebody out there will say, but actually, light is viable, and yes, they are. However, in diamond lobbies, you will rarely find one in round three and the final round. This is because light has a very low survivability and a high learning curve. Unfortunately, the stun gun and glitch grenade, with all their uses, do not have as many team benefits compared to the medium healing beam in defib or heavy's dome in mesh shield. Now that may change in the following weeks or season two, but for now, medium, 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 heavy, and medium, heavy, heavy are the most effective comps in ranked. Also, please don't bring up streamers that are in the top 1% as examples of light's viability because they are not an accurate representation of the average player skill. These guys can literally use a dagger and make it seem like it's OP. Now, onto the best solo specializations for each class. I'm basing these decisions on ease of use as well as team utility. Starting with medium, which is heals and recon. If your teammates select heavy, all you need to do is support them with heals as they frag and keep them alive while stealing. If you are a recon, you will need to be able to ping enemies that are close. This is extremely useful when defending or attempting a third party. The best heavy solo specialization is mesh shield due to its versatility. The best solo specialization for light at the moment is invisibility. The main reason for this is because of survivability. However, all specializations are equally as effective when learned. The only reason why invisibility is preferred is because of its ease of use. Now on to the best solo weapons, starting with medium again, the AKM and the F car. The shotgun and revolver are also very effective, but lack range and depend on team play. If they are used, you have to be sure your teammates have guns that can compensate for that lack of range. The best solo weapons for heavy is the Lewis gun and the shotgun. The Lewis is effective in almost all ranges with fantastic iron sights and recoil. The shotgun may be only effective in medium to close ranges, however with the amount of health heavy has as well as the mesh and dome shield, closing the gap between you and the target is extremely easy. The best solo weapon for light is bar none the XP. I'm not saying other light weapons are useless and if learned, they can be just as effective. However, right out of the box, this weapon is one of the easiest recoil patterns in the game. It can do lots of damage at range as well as be just as effective at close ranges. Now moving on to the best solo gadgets for each class, starting with medium. Of course, we have the defib as the number one gadget on this list. Then moving on to the jump pad, zip line, which is great when you have low gravity. It can help you get from point A to point B without wasting any time. This has saved me countless times while trying to get a vault into a cash box at the very last minute. The APS turn, grenades, gas grenades, as well as gas mines. And again, I just want to state, if you are not using defib while on a medium, I'm going to tell you right now that you are throwing in this current meta. The best solo gadgets for heavy is C4 for blowing cash outs to the floor below, creating new entry points or vantage points. And of course, for nukes. The RPG, because it is a massive DPS burst and can do everything a C4 can besides nuking. And lastly, the dome shield. The best solo gadgets for light is breach charge for all the same reasons C4 is a top pick. Grenades, vanishing bomb, stun gun will help stop steals, and lastly, glitch grenade. Now moving on to tips for when you are live in game and the first tip and debatably the most important is to turn on your mic or voice chat as an introvert i understand how much anxiety it causes when you're turning that voice chat on but the benefits truly outweigh that anxiety the little things is a teammate telling you that a guy is one shot around the corner and killing that one guy can cause a team wipe is so game changing especially on the final round or are you being able to communicate with your teammate that a heavy is lying up right ahead with a nuke ready to blast you guys is information that can actually prevent your entire team from wiping. Now to piggyback off that, make callouts even if someone isn't listening. This is a great way to improve your IGL skill. And remember, even with their mics off, your teammates can still hear your callouts. Regardless if it's a good or bad callout, having some sort of direction is better than having none. Now on to the next tip, play and stick with your team. This may seem super obvious, 
and easy, but in practice, it's actually something that is hard to do. I can't tell you how many times I looked behind me and my teammates were nowhere to be found. This is incredibly frustrating when I'm playing heavy and I need my medium with heals to be there to back me up, only to find that he is on the other side of the map trying to 1v3 a team. Please don't be that guy, stick with your team and play your role. With that being said, take every opportunity you can to focus fire with your teammates. This can turn a three minute engagement with another team into a 10 second engagement, lasering one teammate, then going to the next and then to the next, giving them absolutely no chance to react. Like I said before, don't worry about getting the assist, worry about getting your team the elimination. Speaking of eliminations, make sure to frequently check the scoreboard for team wipes and respawns. This is valuable information when trying to avoid a third party or going in for a third party. The next two tips are gonna require you to put your KD and ego to the side and do what's best for your team. In some situations, it's better to team wipe rather than token. This will give your entire team a refresh and allow you guys not to get into an engagement staggered. Also, sometimes it's better to team wipe rather than waiting for a revive. This is especially true in the final round. The quicker the wipe, the faster the reset. These two tips single-handedly help me not only steal cash outs, but win plenty of final rounds. On to the next, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. If your team is in either third or fourth place at the last minute and you are not able to obtain a vault to deposit, but the other unqualified team is, help them reach the cash out so that your team has another chance to qualify in overtime. The next tip is a little bit questionable, but fuck it. I'm gonna share it with you. Spawn points are unfortunately quite consistent and can be predicted with ease. If there is a spawn point next to the cash box you are defending, placing C4s and traps will deal a significant amount of damage to the enemy when they spawn. I will not be sharing these spawn points because I feel that it is an exploit that will be fixed fairly soon. However, this is essential knowledge that will be used against you in the higher ranks or when going against a coordinated team. So knowing is better than not. If there are multiple heavies in your lobby, utilizing the APS turret next to the cash box will help prevent the cash box from being blown to a different floor. However, this is not a 100% guaranteed counter because if the area around the APS is destroyed, the floor can still fall through. With that being said, try to get your team to not play directly on the cash box when defending. Utilizing gas mines and grenades is an effective way to hold a cash box when it's three quarters done. Goo canisters are a fantastic way to block off cash out entry points. Gas canisters, just like gas mines and gas grenades, are a fantastic way to stall time for the cash box. Now when getting into an engagement, if you eliminate a player and that team has a medium in it, camp that body and ensure a revive is not possible. 8 times out of 10, the teammate will W key it for a quick revive, leading to their elimination too. If you are on heavy and going against a team abusing nukes, use an RPG as a quick counter. If you land a direct hit, it is an instant kill for any heavy holding a nuke. And take the damage that the nuke would have caused your team and spread it amongst their own teammates if they are close by. If you are in second place and there is a minute left, try to attain a nearby vault and throw it as far as you can away from the cash box location. Even if it prevents the opposing team just 5 to 10 seconds, that could be the difference between winning and losing. Now if you have communication with your team and end up losing the first battle for the 10k cash out, try to convince them to wait after spawning to check whether or not another team is wiped around the same time you did. The reason for this is because the team that did wipe may spawn at the same cash out, therefore making it three teams fighting for one cash out, thus raising the possibility for a third party. However, if you do decide to go for that cash out, do not be the first team to start the engagement. This will leave your back exposed for a guaranteed third party. Instead, try to communicate and convince your team to wait for either one team wipe or for both teams to have at least one player eliminated. Odds are both teams would have most likely used up all their abilities, making them extremely vulnerable. Now again, if you are lucky enough to have communication with your team, try your best to convince them not to battle for the first vault, but rather tag it for the first thousand dollars and run to the cash out and wait for another team to take the vault to you. Worst case scenario, they double it instead of taking it to your cash box, leaving you still in second place, being that you already have a thousand dollar safety net from tagging the first vault. Speaking of tagging vaults, if you are third and only $1,000 behind at the last minute, try your best to hit one of the vaults. This has won me tons of games because each time you tap a vault, you get $1,000, which just may be enough to put you in second place. When using a mesh shield, always try to stand in front of your teammates so they can shoot through it in safety. Also on the flip side, if your teammate is using a mess shield, please stand behind it and shoot. If you just so happen to be in a heavy, heavy medium comp, alternate mess shields with the other heavy when reloading to hold position or close gaps. This will preserve both mess shields and provide continuous DPS while the medium is healing from behind. Of course, this depends on the teammates actually selecting the correct specializations and communicating with you. Also, I know there will be someone in the comments that's gonna say, my teammates never communicate with me, which is a hyperbolic statement that is completely 
completely not true. I guarantee you that if you turn on your mic, at some point you're going to find teammates that are more than willing to work together. If you're using heavy, to obtain extra time when holding the cash box, play C4 on the roof of the level underneath as well as on the floor. So when the enemy team decides to go for a steal, you can blow out the floor, making them fall through the floor, preventing the steal, and even sometimes have debris cover the cash box. If you know you have enough money to win, it is okay to sit back, live, and wait for the match to be over. You don't need to fight every battle to win the round. On the other end of the spectrum, when in the final round, focus on team wiping rather than defending. You can always steal the vault back when you wipe the opposing team. There is absolutely no rush to steal back the cash out, being that there isn't a third party to worry about. And my last tip, and hence why I said to treat every player with the respect you want to be treated with, if you just so happen to be lucky enough to get some crack teammates you have great synergy with, friend request them and ask them to run it back. This can easily turn 600 points into 1200. And that's about it. I wanted to apologize for some of these tips being a little bit scatterbrained, I try to organize it the best I possibly could. However, ADHD and organization doesn't really go hand in hand. Anyhow, I wanted to clarify some things with you guys and let you know, depending on your ELO, from bronze all the way to diamond, your opponent's skill level will not vary a lot. The only thing that will vary if you solo queue is the skill level of your teammates. What do I mean by this? Well, from bronze to silver, there will be a high possibility that you will receive ranks that are at minimum higher than yours as teammates. For example, being a bronze player and getting a diamond and a gold player as your two teammates. This will essentially give you the illusion that your matches from bronze to gold are easier. But in reality, they were not. What most likely happened is that you had really good teammates that complemented your skill, assuming that you were one of the players with a very high elo but really never invested any time in ranked. On the other hand, when you get to gold 1 and beyond, you will receive players that are most likely significantly lower than your current rank, going against other teams that are most likely stacked. The only question is, are you the lucky player that is paired with two other players that have high elos just like yourself but just didn't play much ranked, or are you going to be stuck with players that actually have no idea what they're doing? But with that being said, the only plus side and the most important thing you have to remember is that diamond can be attained through persistence, because at the end of the day, you only lose points if you lose the first round till diamond. And even if that happens, if you manage to snag third place, the points you would have lost would be cut in half. So before I finish this video, I want to leave you guys with this. If you are playing solo, don't treat ranked like it's ranked, but rather treat ranked like you're playing a casual tournament. You'll be surprised with how much LP is gained at the end of your session and actually may start to find enjoyment in this game mode. But that's about it guys, I hope this video helps in some way, shape, or form. And again, be a Chad and smash that like button. It truly helps out the channel. Also, subscribe for all things the finals and I'll see you guys next time. Peace and love.